Um, is this thing on? Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Dr. Sharma. I'm sure you guys have already heard the news, but the USMLE is now taking away their three-digit numeric score and making the exam pass or fail. Scores will continue to be reported for step two CK and step three. And quote unquote, this was done to reduce some of the current overemphasis on USMLE performance while retaining the ability of the medical licensing authorities to use the exam for its purpose of medical licensure eligibility. Previously, the USMLE score could have been used for a cutoff for programs directors to interview some of their candidates and decide people on their rank list. And now moving forward, starting in 2022, this will no longer be the case for medical students entering class in 2025. Wow, 2025, that sounds like such a long time. Now, what could this mean for medical students moving forward? Well, one, I have to admit, it definitely does increase the amount of stress that people have over this exam that was once created because of the three-digit score and trying to just do your best so you can compete. I mean, I have to admit, even when I was studying for it, there was just an overemphasis on it and I was extremely stressed out and anxious about that three-digit numeric code that would essentially stick with you for the rest of your life and really, to some degree, affect how you match during residency. However, I was one to believe that that score did get Give an indication of how hard you worked and how much time you put into actually learn medicine even though it was just board relevant material because it still has an impact on patient outcome and how you do on rotations let's look at it this way if you studied super hard for a board exam it's not like you're not going to use any of that material during your rotations right i actually used a lot of that information during my third and fourth year i knew the next best step i knew the diagnosis and i knew the medicine and medical treatments that i needed to know on the fly before anybody else could just use google and look it up if i hadn't studied so hard for that exam, I don't think I would have shined the way I did on my rotations. And I don't feel like I would have been as comfortable as I did during my preliminary medicine year, which is my internship year before I started radiology. You see, I had all that information so logged in and drilled into my head in detail that I did not have to sit on my phone and look it up on Dynamed or up to date. I also think differential diagnoses were really drilled in my head as well because of the exam. And I also think that was really important during rotations. Really, if I didn't have all that information and be ready to present it to my intern or resident or attending while I was a medical student, I would have felt like an even more useless medical student. And medical students already kind of feel useless on most of the rotations for the most part. Also, what does this mean for IMGs and DOs or even MDs? Well, if you already went to a top 10 medical school or a medical school that has a lot of NIH funding, a lot of research opportunities is known to have very good core rotations and is essentially a top 10 or top 50 MD program in the United States, you're in the clear. This totally works towards your advantage because now if you pass, it wouldn't have mattered if you got into 220 or a 250. You went to Northwestern or Harvard or Yale, you are the top of the top. But now IMGs and DOs do not have that three digit numerical value working for them, which they once did. For example, a DO competing against somebody from Yale, the DO having a score of 260 and someone from Yale having a score of 220, at least there was some playing field for those two different medical schools and two different degrees. Now it's up to school name, NIH funding and research projects, and quality of rotations that some of the DO and ING programs just can't compete against USA MD programs. There's definitely going to be more emphasis on volunteer hours, interpersonal skills, good looks, and well, luck. Yeah, at the end of the day, I kind of think we took a step backwards. Because while many people saw this exam as super stressful, I think that if you're going to be choosing a career in medicine where you have a patient's health on your hands, a career that meticulously balances life versus death, a career that gives you the power to be able to take care of one of my family members, I hope to God that you took the time to learn your medicine and learn your shit and not just pass or fail medical school and out. Hope you guys like my talks. Hope you guys like my channel and my videos. Please like and subscribe. It definitely helps me know how I'm doing. Comment and compliment below. And as always, good luck.